you come into the patient's room, you wash your hands, introduce yourself, provide for privacy, and then we're gonna go over and do our patient identification. So you check the patient's ID band, you confirm that with two identifiers, asking the patient a name, full name and date of birth. Also ask for any allergies. Double check that um, with the EMR to make sure that you have the right patient. Once you determine you have the right patient, you again are going to review the practitioner's order or prescription in the EMR. Once you verify the um, prescription in the EMR, then you can go ahead and also look at the patient's indication for having the IV started. And in this case, the order is for an IV saline lock that we're gonna place. And it's for um, giving IV antibiotics and medica other medications. Um, the patient is not going to have infusing IV fluids at this time. So I look at the patient's past history, medical history, and I make sure that this is appropriate to, to perform on the patient. I also wanna make sure that um, the extremity that I'm going to choose for the IV is um, free of any um, circulation problems, uh, stroke paralysis, um, lymphedema, perhaps from ma mastectomy. Um, so I'm just gonna note all that before I, I choose that extremity and I will go for the other extremity if that's the case. All right, so now that I'm in the room, uh, I washed my hands as I entered the room, but I'm gonna go ahead, I checked the identification, I'm gonna lower this side rail, and I'm going to raise the bed to a working height. And I'm gonna explain to my patient what I'm going to be doing. Patient has no questions, they verbalize understanding, deny any um, past history of having problems with IV starts. Okay, so I have my patient's extremity here that I'm going to be evaluating the, um, the veins in. And many times when we're performing IV starts, it's best to try to find a very good vein, if you can, to start that IV. It causes less pain for the patient and the um, vein will last a little bit longer, especially for giving medications. I'm gonna go ahead and place my gloves on I brought all my supplies in the room with me and I checked expiration dates on the supplies and everything is um, good to go. All right, so as I look at the patient's arm, I'm noting that this patient is darker skin colored. So a lot of times you wanna have bright light when you're looking at patients with um, dark skin. Fluorescent light is the best, but bright light if you don't have fluorescent light because you're able to see the veins a little bit better. Okay, so I'm looking here I'm gonna grab my tourniquet out of my IV start kit because I'm going to assess her veins. Okay. So now I'm going to um, find the appropriate vein that I wanna use for this patient. I'm gonna place the tourniquet on And then I'm gonna go ahead and examine the veins. Um, the veins in the hand look fairly good. Um, they also have, um, you know, I can feel this one here has a few bumps that might be a valve. So I'm gonna go up a little bit further because a lot of times you wanna start more distal because if you're unsuccessful, you might um, have to keep going a little bit up in the arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and feel this vein here and this vein feels really well. It's soft, it's flexible, it's bouncy. When I pull down on it, I don't feel any valves in this area and I don't see any valves in that area. So I'm gonna kind of put this patient's arm in sort of a dependent position and then I'm gonna go ahead and release the tourniquet and I'm going to remove my gloves and wash my hands and I'm ready to cleanse the site. So with the chlorhexidine, I squeeze to activate it, and I'm gonna go ahead and do my cleansing. And I'm gonna let that dry. And as I'm letting it dry, I'm just gonna make sure that I have everything that I need. And I have my normal saline flush, and I attached it to an extension tubing 
And the kind of tubing that you're going to use for an extension kind of depends on what type of IV catheter that you're using. So uh, for instance, this one um, is, doesn't have an extension built into it, so I need to have a full extension to put on it. So I open that up, okay, and then I let get that ready over here. All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and I'm gonna wash my hands again. Always telling the patient what you are doing and explaining what you're doing. Okay, I'm gonna put my gloves on here. So now I'm going to reapply the tourniquet about four inches above where I'm going to insert my IV. Again, making sure that I'm checking the radial pulse and avoiding touching where you cleansed your site. And I'm going to remove the protective cover on my IV. Okay, make sure that my bevel is up. And then I'm prepare the patient and tell them I'm gonna puncture the skin at about a five to 15 degree. You're gonna feel a poke. Once you feel that puncture the skin, go in a little bit more and try to even out your catheter. Okay. And then we're gonna release our safety. Putting that over there, I'm going to grab my Securior IV, release your tourniquet. And try to get the top off of there. Okay, securing your IV. And you're going to blood return and then you're going to flush with approximately three cc's of normal saline. Good. Once you have that flushed, you're going to clamp. The IV. And then you have the patient, remind the patient to hold still. And then you're gonna go ahead and open up your securement device. And there's different types of securement devices, but this is a stat lock. Always the best here on and once you have your stat lock secured on there, then you can go ahead and put your tegaderm dressing, your clear dressing over. sides here. All right. And then I'm going to remove my saline syringe. Keeping that end sterile and then I'm going to place my disinfectant cap on there. clamped. And then I ask the patient how they're doing. The patient states they're doing okay. And then I make sure that all my supplies are discarded and my sharps are in the sharps container. And also if, if you needed you could put a skin protectant underneath your stat lock if you feel it's necessary. If your patient has like sweaty skin um, or moist skin, you can do that as do that as well. Now I'm going to take off my gloves. And I'm going to label the date and my initials that the IV was placed. 
wash my hands again. And then I'm gonna put the patient in a comfortable position. Put the side rails up. Bed locked and lowered. Call light within reach. Tray table next to the patient. And then I am going to complete and then I'm going to document everything that I did and how the patient tolerated it. <laughs>